Hi guys and welcome back to Malt Box, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and I'm back here today with another whiskey review. Now I kind of hinted in my last review of the Finely Bay Spirit of Yorkshire uh, flagship that I'm going to be concentrating on a lot of English whiskies going forward or, or at least I'm going to try and get as many English whiskies into my reviews as I can going forwards. Now admittedly stock is pretty low still, you know releases are relatively small because again it's quite a young scene. Uh, however, I'm staying to that theme and today I have a lovely whiskey from a great little distillery that I visited a couple of times. It's from Cotswolds and it's this, the Cotswolds Bourbon, I believe single cask release, uh, English single malt. And there is the box, very striking orange in person, it probably doesn't come quite <laughs> across quite the same on camera, uh, but it is very very bright indeed. Well, certainly the label is and there you go. There we are. Now, I said straight away that I think it's a single cask, it can't be, because it's two and a half thousand bottles, so I'll take that back. But it is ultimately first fill X bourbon uh, maturation. We're looking at a bottling strength of 59.1%. It is non-chill filtered, it is natural coloured. Do you know why I know that? Because it says there on the back of the label, which is pretty good when they tell you. So I've already said that I visited the Cotswolds a couple of times. Oh. Um, <laughs> if you're ever in the Cotswolds um, around Oxfordshire and that neck of the woods, I really would recommend it. Lovely little distillery, really friendly team. Lovely whiskey. For me, the Cotswolds is far and away the best value English whiskey out there at the minute. It is. It's probably the most widely available as well, which they don't really have a much bigger setup than a lot of their competitors, should we say, or compatriots is probably the word I should probably use because whilst they are competing, I guess, it's still very early uh, seen as I've already said so everyone's still sort of in it together at the minute um, and there is a bit of a camaraderie thing going on but I suppose the next biggest distillery that I can think of in England would be in its current form St George's in Norfolk that's probably more comparable now Cotswolds are looking at increasing their capacity um, it's not going to happen overnight obviously um, but I mean for example I've already reviewed months and months ago the uh, Odyssey Barley releases and I will be picking up one of the, the latest review well well, I'm going to review the latest batch I've got somewhere. Um, again, a lot of my whiskey is still about 40 miles away in storage. Um, so I am kind of limited as to what I have on hand to review. But I'm going through what I feel I want to drink at the minute. So really nice golden colour there. In the glass, no legs as such as of yet, which you know to me shows it's going to be a really nice viscous spirit on the nose. Now again, bear in mind, yeah, 59.1. I would ordinarily add water to a dram of this strength. However, in advance, I know personally that I don't really feel like it needs it. I'm this far through the bottle. So I might see how I feel. I do have a glass of water and a spoon. Let's see how we go. Very atypical ex-bourbon maturation notes there. We've got the vanillas, we've got the spices, we've got a bit of cinnamon, some brown sugar. Also a nice sort of lemon sherbet kind of thing going on. Really, really pleasant, very zippy, very agile, very light. It's quite floral as well. And there's a lovely, maybe not apple, but maybe like a gooseberry kind of note in there. Something a little bit tart right at the back of the nose. Really lovely nose for me. It is... I like Cotswold style spirit. Their base spirit is really, really nice. And I have tried it. I've tried it in the warehouse. I've tried it in samples prior to that as well. Lovely and fruity, slightly nutty, but still very light. And apologies if you can hear squeaking, that will be Sky, the Labrador making a nuisance of herself as usual upstairs. So we're just gonna have to squeak our way through this review if you can hear that. I say I apologize, she's a dog, you know what I mean? I can't apologize for her, she's a good girl. So, now I can't remember off the top of my head where the casks were sourced in the in sense of what distillery. Um, so, unfortunately, I'm all out of ideas on that one. However, what I can tell you is in this particular batch, there is two and a half thousand bottles. Now, at first, I've held on to this for a while. This was released. I can tell you that as well, <laughs> I hope. Uh, no, I can't. Right, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was released around kind of April. Uh, May time this year 
Um, sorry, no, Christmas. Just It was just before Christmas. Um, I tell lies, so it's probably October, November. And the only reason I know that is I was gifted this for Christmas 2021. And I thought, you know what, I'm not going to review that because 2,500 bottles, you know, it's very niche. It's going to go. But it's still around. You can still find it on a lot of usual suspect websites like Master of Malt, Whiskey Exchange. You can also find it in some nice little independent retailers as well. So on the palette, 59.1%. Let's see what this has got. Hmm. Already. Oh, that texture. Divine. Lovely and thick. The palette itself, very creamy. That vanilla initially hits quite hard at the front, but then the spices come in. We're thinking cinnamon. We've got a little bit of black pepper. That sort of citrus sherbet I mentioned from the nose. Yeah, there's more citrus there, but it is more of a sort of lemon peel kind of thing. Very, very citrusy. Um, that freshness comes back in as well, but where I said it might be sort of a tart gooseberry on the nose, it is more of an apple-y flavour to me on the palate. Very clean, almost pear maybe, going into the finish. Which, now that I'm onto the subject, is very long, very, very warming indeed. Vanilla is pretty much the swan song of this dram, I'd say. There is, however, this nice cut up kind of like maple syrupy sweetness going on. Not a sugar sweetness, more of like a, an earthier, a deeper richness to it. Uh, I'll stick to my guns. I personally don't think it needs water. I mean, what I might do is just add a, a teaspoon to it for science or half a teaspoon, just a little bit, um, and just see what's what. Now, I, I kind of started touching on the Odyssey Barley releases before, and honestly, for me, it is, it is probably the standout English single malt. Um, it's a bottle that I've had many, many versions of, the different year releases. It's a bottle that pretty much every time I see it in a supermarket, I buy it. One of the reasons being that it's on offer quite a lot. Now, I've already gone back to the point now where I've mentioned the Cotswolds doesn't have a massive amount of capacity. You know, I haven't seen their warehousing. Okay, yeah, they've got some off-site as well, I believe, but they don't have a huge amount of stock to play with. So the fact that I can buy a well-presented 46% natural colour, non-chill filtered English single malt in a UK supermarket, often on sale for 30 or 35 pounds. For me, it's a no-brainer, because when I look at what's next to it on the shelf, I see no age statement singletons, which is fine in its own way, but by comparison, I'm gonna go for the Cotswolds every damn time. The usual suspects are always priced at, you know, think about it, Glenfiddich 12's normally around 35 quid in the supermarkets when it's not an offer, I appreciate. Yes, sometimes it can go down to 30 or 25, but, what I'd probably say to you is, if you do come across it in the supermarket and you've not tried it before and it's on offer, it really is, for me, worth a punt at that money. I've not found an issue with a single bottle. I've enjoyed every single bottle and the more air that gets in the Odyssey Barley releases with its combination of ex-bourbon and STR red wine cask uh, maturation, I just find that air makes it sing. It's a lovely, lovely young whiskey. It really, really is. And the Cotswolds doing some great, great things. So now that's had a little bit of time with a little bit of water. Oh, on the nose, it's very soft now. The creaminess is still there, but it's more of a kind of rice puddingy with this cinnamon sort of thing on the top. A little bit of that tartness is still there. More of the cereal notes are probably coming through is what I'd say, which might go back to that rice pudding that I mentioned. A little bit grainy but not in a bad way, not in a single grain way. I mean, like grains and cereals kind of way. <sighs> really, I'm, I'm going to nail on that gooseberry this time. Honestly, that is tart gooseberry for me. Maybe a little bit of rhubarb and custard sweet at the end. Hmm, palette. It's a lovely dram. I think the palette doesn't differentiate too much with water in terms of flavour, but I, th I suppose what I'd say is it takes some of the heat out of the finish. I personally don't mind it. Other people might not like that. They might see that as an alcohol burn and they might not like it and, and say it's a rough dram or it's a, it's too young, it's too harsh. For me, it's not. I just like that in a dram. I like a nice warm finish. It warms me up. It lets me know that I'm drinking alcohol at the end of the day. Um, so this does, that water does kind of smooth out that finish a little bit. 
very, very pleasant. I'm still getting this lovely flavour, this vanilla and spice and cinnamon in there. It is a lovely, lovely drop. It really, really is. Cotswolds, bourbon cask release. Good stuff. Another feather in the hat of English whiskey. Outstanding. So, guys, I'm going to box it off. Thank you very much for watching. I'm on Instagram, at Whiskey. I'm on Twitter, at Maltbox. Thanks for watching. See you soon.